let me pray for you multiplied visions and spiritual experiences because let me tell you if you understand these principles that I show you your life will become an unending wonder it's true it's not a lie they are not opinions hallelujah the next law spiritual law the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us destiny help us destiny help us destiny help us these are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships please understand this everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships we are relational beings in fact the faith work starts with a relationship a relationship with jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth relationships matter in this life please listen when you master relationships you will tame life like a dog i wish i had the time but let's look at just one scripture second samuel chapter 9 it's a long reading i don't know if we can look at it second samuel chapter 9 we'll start from verse 1 destiny help us there is there is a teaching and David said, ah, I answer amen for this for even myself. And David said, is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for whose sake? Not for his sake. For Jonathan, because you are related to Jonathan. I want to change your life. Next verse. And there was in the house of one Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet. Is a son, but it's a son that cannot help himself. Next verse. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And he said, Behold, he is in Laudeba, and so on and so forth. Verse 5. Let's hurry up. I just want us to get the, the central message. And the, and the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, and the son of Amiel from Laudeba. 6. Now when Mephibosheth, ah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the spirit of God. Men can show men kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. 
water you turn into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you yeah. none like you water you turn to say water you turn into wine open the eyes of the blind We're talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you. Sit down. I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No, it's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9, we're reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, please listen. I have given unto thy master's son, all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited. But in this kingdom, there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Listen. And then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy every disadvantage you don't take blemish before the king did you not read malachi you call me a king why do you bring me animals with blemish the guy already called himself a dog the king said it doesn't matter may you find the man anointed by god to lift you please hear what i'm saying you can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. 
will find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching, please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah. But there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check, but he knows how to connect you to someone who honors your vision. Divine connectors. Number two, the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access. These ones are people who have influence. They are gatekeepers of industries. Halus Kaprando Kashubria. Who, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God, let me tell you this sincerely, please hear me. Not every enemy is castable. Just think about what I'm saying. There are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God. You cannot cast them. When God wants you to pass through that gate, he will make them to show you favor. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are gatekeepers. A Cyrus can reject you. He does not honor God, but you are rejected. How do you cast Caesar? How do you cast Herod? So he granted favor. And when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus, they allowed it. Not every man you can just pray and say, let him leave that place. Let me tell you, there are men that would not go there. Because their stewardship is a covenant. They are not even there because of what they did. They are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect. Although they are unbelievers. Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel. Because he will always remember Abraham. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth. In a desert land, yet they are prosperous. Because God is a covenant keeping God. So when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not leaving. Find out their grandfather who loved God. Arranged something for them with God. Forget that they are rebelling while they are there. Their children will pay for it. But for that time, no. Your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor. And you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results. What I tell you is called spiritual intelligence. It's true. These are the kinds that you need favor, influence. Did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph? He just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph. Notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh, they were allowed to serve their God. And Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest, Potiphar, the priest of On, as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere. And he still gave him as a wife. And in, in the land of Goshen, the people, cont it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. That was when their oppression started. So even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally, you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people Every father needs these people. They are the people that make work easy. They are the errands and the horse. You need gifted people. They must be sent by God. You will see a big church of 5,000 people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard. You need to cry for gifted people. 
Are we together? Gifted people. I have seen personally precious, great, anointed men and women of God, but no support systems, no gifted people. There are families that don't have gifted people. Every house help is a thief. Every house help is a robber. Everybody is a, I mean, you, there has to be a skilled person. Gifted people. I'm saying this so that when you are praying, you can ask in prayer, Lord, send me gifted people. Make my life easy. You have a business because of scarcity. You, you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life. Hello, is this so 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 person's office? Why are you here? Please, if you are, don't you know who gave you the address? And person, I'm sorry. And he leaves. You are inside there doing CEO and your company is failing. You need to pray for gifted people. No man exists as an island. Gifted. I pray this prayer all the time. And I tell you sincerely, and I, 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 I stand broken before God to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people. The workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people. Has saved me the stress of any other thing. I focus on the ministry of prayer and the word. Please, you need gifted people in your life. Otherwise, life will be hard. You can't do everything by yourself. Hallelujah. Gifted people. The day your wife is giving birth, that's the day the quack doctor is on duty. You, you see what is happening? The day your child is sick, that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection. And he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth. The midwife that threw Mephibosheth, she was called a midwife. What happened that she threw the guy down? Do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child? Lord, send me gifted people in the name of Jesus Christ. And the last of all, very quickly, they are called burden bearers. The last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers. During the, your down times in life, you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne. They love you because of who you are. The flat tree of success can kill. People can clap when there is a crown on your head. But when you are at the cross, you will need burden bearers. And Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, the Bible records. And he was, he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die. He would have died there. And if he died there, there would be a problem. Because he needed to die a curse. Not just to die a man. Cause is the man that hangs upon the tree, he says. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. So if he died on the way, that's not redemption. That's obituary. And then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene. The black man, the nigger, and he, the guy gladly carried the cross. Let me tell you, I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David. They saw him hiding and they said, you will become our king. It's not everybody that is looking for results. There are people who will stay with you. As the landlord is driving you, they will stand there and say, no, I will not run away. Men are selfish by design. Please, every leader, hear me. You need to trust God for the grace for real burden bearers. Men and women who can cry with you. They can say, Hosanna, but when you're on your way to the cross, you will only see Mary and John there. Burden bearers. There are men of God when they are, we start building project, everybody just runs away. When the building is completed, people come and dance again to acknowledge God. Burden bearers. Even the disciples ran away. But there was a woman who said, let me risk my life. I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body. 
I hope you know that was why she went. She carried to go and purify his body. What if she died on the way? A burden bearer will be like Ruth to Naomi. Your God will be my God. And your people. You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Can you repeat this words after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I declare that you are the Son of God. You came into the world and you died. On the third day, you rose again. I believe in the resurrection. Holy Spirit, fill my heart now. I receive eternal life because I have been washed right now with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for saving me. I declare you are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you right now that you are establishing God you are kept in God. The God who is able to keep you from falling will sustain you the rest of your life. 